The first established death penalty laws date as far back as the 18th century BC in the Code of King Hammurabi of Babylon, which codified the death penalty for 25 different crimes. However, Nicholas Jacques Pilatier was the first recorded person to die in the U.S. by the guillotine on April 25, 1792. When the Code of Theodosius came around, it made more than 80 crimes punishable by death. The death penalty was first outlawed in Wisconsin in 1853, but more recently was Washington, Maryland, Connecticut, Illinois, and Delaware. The guillotine was invented on April 25, 1792, and was named after its inventor, Dr. Guillotin. It weighed roughly 128 pounds, the average height was 16 feet, and the metal blade weighed about 88.2 pounds, and it traveled at about the rate of 21 feet per second. It took 200th of a second for the beheading to occur. The guillotine was invented as a more humane method of execution. The first to be beheaded was Nicholas Jacques Pelletier on April 25, 1792. He was convicted of robbing and killing a man on the road. The last person to be executed via guillotine was Hamadi Jan Duby. He was also convicted of murder. He was publicly executed on September 10, 1977, and the first place the guillotine was outlawed was where it was originally developed, France. It was outlawed in 1981. The electric chair is an object of death that has killed around 4,300 people. Its first victim in Florida was Frank Johnson in 1924, but the first victim overall was William Kelmer. Another victim was Willie Francis. Willie was an African-American teenager known for surviving a failed electrocution in the U.S. He was a convicted juvenile sentenced to death at the age of 16 by Louisiana in 1945, for the murder of Andrew Thomas, who was a Cajun pharmacy owner in St. Martinville who had once employed him. The first outlawing of the electric chair was on February 8, 2008, when the Nebraska Supreme Court ruled that execution by electric chair was a cruel and unusual punishment under the state's constitution. Yet, as of 2022, the electric chair is an option for execution in Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. The electric chair was specifically designed not to be cruel. Death by electrocution was supposedly quick and painless. However, recent studies show that the person in the electric chair was fully aware that they were being fried alive. Today, death by electric chair can no longer be called an unusual punishment, but it is, in fact, cruel. The idea of hanging as a use of execution was introduced by a Germanic man named Angelo Saxons. It was introduced as early as the 5th century, but the first known hanging was around the 10th century. The first person to be hung was Thomas Granger in Plymouth Colony, England, in 1642. Thomas Granger was a young man, believed to be 16 or 17 years old. He was convicted of stealing a mare, a cow, two goats, divers' sheep, two calves, and a turkey. The last person to ever be hung was Rainy Betha in Owensboro, Kentucky, August 14, 1936. He was convicted of rape. Shockingly, three states still allow the death penalty of hanging. Those three states are Delaware, New Hampshire, and Washington. The original purpose of hanging was for a quick and easy way to end criminals' lives. On January 17, 1977, a 10-year moratorium of executions ended with the execution of Gary Gilmore by firing squad in Utah. In 1977, Oklahoma became the first state to adopt lethal injection as a means of execution. The first person to die by lethal injection was Charles Brooke on December 7, 1982. As of today, lethal injection is the primary method of execution in 28 of the 29 states that authorize executions. Texas was the first state to use the method in 1982. In 2021, South Carolina became the first state to stop using lethal injection as a primary execution method. Since the year 1976, 1,363 executions in the country have been conducted through lethal injection. The main reason lethal injection is so popular is due to the fact that it was considered cheaper and more humane than electrocution or lethal gas. However, lethal injection isn't perfect. Sometimes victims are left gasping for air and suffering. The death penalty pain. is a very controversial topic of discussion. In this video, I have decided to separate the pros and cons into three groups. Moral and ethical arguments. Arguments relating to the efficiency of the death penalty as a deterrent. And arguments relating to the financial cost of it. The main moral argument in favour of the death penalty is that it fairly exacts justice. The punishment, death, fits the crime, which in most cases is murder. Furthermore, proponents of the death penalty believe that certain crimes require the offender to be put to death.
A good example of this is the Japanese system, where the death penalty is only used on people who have committed multiple murders. Opponents of the death penalty argue that it is a backwards method, in line with outdated thinking of an eye for an eye, and that it gives the government too much power. In the US, opponents of the death penalty argue that it breaches the Eighth Amendment of the US Constitution of a cruel and unusual punishment. Proponents argue that the death penalty cannot be represented as a cruel and unusual punishment because it already existed when the Eighth Amendment was being written, thus the writers of it could have already called it out if they wanted to, but they didn't. The next group of arguments concerning the death penalty relate to whether or not it is an effective deterrent. Proponents argue that having death as the punishment for murder deters criminals, and that it provides closure to the families of victims. Opponents argue that there is no evidence of the death penalty being an effective deterrent, and that the death penalty cannot console families, as it cannot bring back the murdered. Furthermore, opponents argue that the vigour with which the death penalty is pursued has led to a disproportionate number of black people being executed. In the USA, 35% of those executed since 1976 are black, even though black people make up only 13% of the US's population at large. The final argument for or against the death penalty concerns its cost. Opponents argue that those on death row cost a lot more than those in prison for life due to the lengthy appeals process. Proponents argue that this appeals process only exists because of the lobbying of opponents of the death penalty, and that the process therefore could be streamlined if the lobbying stopped, reducing costs. However, this risks putting to death the innocent, a mistake that cannot be undone. In conclusion, it seems that the death penalty is favoured by some who believe certain crimes are so heinous that they necessitate death, whereas others oppose it because they don't believe the government should have the power to kill people. Opponents also maintain that the death penalty is expensive, an ineffective deterrent, and that it risks putting to death the innocent. Proponents hold that the death penalty provides closure to families, and that making death the punishment for murder does deter potential criminals who may have murdered if not for it being in place. That's the death penalty. In conclusion, the death penalty has changed to a great extent. The death penalty had always had its issues and problems, but the government is trying to improve the death penalty. Hopefully, we can figure out a quick and painless death for these criminals' lives. We have come very far from the guillotine and hangings to lethal injections. The first methods of execution were a painful and often slow process. Sometimes, the hangings would just break their neck and leave them suffering for hours, and there have been times recorded when the guillotine wouldn't do a clean cut leaving parts of their neck slivered, but the victim still alive in pain. Now we use lethal injections. Sadly, we can't perfect a painless death. Sometimes it doesn't work, and the victim is left gasping for air and suffering. Typically, the injection works, and the victim has a mostly painless death, which is still better than getting your head chopped off.